What's up again folks, and we're back again over the Christmas period. As you can see, the fly tying den desk place is absolutely a mess with fly tying stuff. I've been doing a lot of light lure fishing on canals, stay local over Christmas, and it's just become an absolute bomb site in here whilst I'm still tying. Um, gonna share a fly with you today that I, I really don't want to. <laughs> Um, everyone's got that fly that's sort of like the go-to fly. It's, you know, when you're having a bad day, it goes on your confidence fly that you know is going to catch. Um, I mean, to demonstrate how much I trust this fly, that's my main nymph box. It's not in there because I've dedicated an entire box just to this pattern in various sizes and colorways. Um, it's a super simple tie. Man uses waste materials actually, so it's a perfect fly, um, you know, for making full use of everything that you've got. Um, and it's just super effective. I tie them in sizes like four mil right the way down to two mil, size 18 to 20s. Um, <clears throat> had great, great catches on all sizes. So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, jump on the vise and show you how to tie one. So, <clears throat> here we go. Usual thread, Semperfly Nano Silk. Uh, this time we're on a size 14 jig hook with a three and a half mil copper bead. But I'll use these up to about four mil normally and right down to about two mil. Just gonna secure the bead in place, bring the thread down to about there, just where a barb would be, if you notice where the thread is resting below. I'm gonna go for a cocktail on tail. We want a good amount of fibres to create a nice strong tail profile for this flight. To get the tips nice and level. Off they come. And we're going to have it about that length. It's the length I like to go for. I like shorter tails over a longer one. But each of their own, it's, you know, personal preference, as I said before. That's probably too long for me, so I'm going to back off a few wraps. Grab the tips here. Gently pull. Always goes too much. Being a lefty, I'm better off pulling back the other way. About that, that, that that'll do me. Gonna tie down those fibres up a bit. over the back just gonna tie that down bring the thread up and back down again help to build the taper and from this point now I'm just going to tie in the rib which is glow bright number seven I tie this in a range of different colored ribs um, right the way through to reds pinks um, it's really good fly but I prefer this orange just for confidence, I've just uh, had more success on the orange. Right, so I've doubled the uh, the strand over. I'm now going to tie that in. Again, right the way up, build that taper. And I'm going to come there now. Stop it just short to where the thread sort of ends by the tail just to allow room for that first wrap without pushing the tail down. I'm then going to come up to about midway up the fly. I'm going to grab just a regular natural CDC feather. To tie that in, I'm going to a loose loop, pull all the way through, tie it up, get rid of that rubbish off the line. And I'm going to hold it on the side of the hook and tied down again not all the way down i've got to allow room for that first wrap then i'm going to come back up the fly up to the head from here you can do this by hand but i find it a lot easier just using some hackle pliers grab the tip of the feather and we're just going to wind see how that's splayed backwards there so i've had to allow room you can use your rotary device if you've got one or wrap it with your hand, no problem. I'm 
we're going to lock that in place. Two turns is plenty. And on the third one, just to secure. And we'll trim that off. From here, we're going to grab our rib and we're going to twist. We're going to twist the rib. Creates a nice round profile, but also increases the durability tenfold, especially for brown trout. They get their teeth on it. Can soon ruin the uh, ruin the ribbon of the fly. And I'm going to twist it until you'll start to notice that it starts to bunch up a bit. Don't know that it'll show up on camera, but see that's starting to just bunch. I'm going to stop before it bunches. Out there. And I'm going to pinch that with some hackle pliers. Loop it over there just to stop it unfolding. Take some varnish. It's just all un unspun again on me, which is very annoying. So I'm going to take some varnish, re-spin it back up again. Should be lovely. And I'm just going to brush that with a very thin layer of varnish. I don't want to coat it. So I'm just in a thin layer. Smoothing it out with my finger. And I'm going to rib this fly now. Nice and evenly, right the way up to the top. Again, with no things really. Three turns, locks it in place. Turn that off. And that's the body of our fly. From this point, before we wrap, the feather we've cut off. And I'll keep all these as well, just old cut ends off CDC. What I'm going to do is get the scissors and I'm going to cut all the fibres off the side of it. I'm going to lick my fingers, just help to uh, adhere to the, the thread. Although it does get Quite finicky. You need a very small bit. So it's just come off the thread there. Don't rush it, take your time. It's that nice loose effect where it's barely on that gives you these nice soft fibres which really add to the fly. So you don't want to uh, you don't want to stick too much dubbing wax on or try and really twist it on the thread to stop those. That's the, uh, the beauty of the fly. At this point, I'm going to grab another CDC feather. You're going to need a whole one for this. Sorry, half it's gone up my nose as I've just been breathing. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab the feather, pull some fibres back. Again, I'm selecting the length of fibres I want on the fly by choosing where I'm tying it in. So all these feathers back this way will be in the fly now, slightly longer. I'm doing three turns there. Just nipping off the tag. A little fourth one just to lay it down. From here the hackle pliers come back again. Pinching and I'm doing half a turn first. Pull that back, straight up, and that is more than enough, not even a full turn. Very easily, with, with a load of different hackle patterns actually, to really over hackle it and it doesn't need it. I'd even say that's over hackled really. Two bits of thread to secure. Bit of wax on the thread now because we're obviously putting a, a nice bulky thorax in. Thorax? Th don't know why I went northern there. Uh, <laughs> same again, old feather, old fibres, get those and trim them off the side. Lick my fingers again, just put them on the thread. Hold your fibres back 
can just dub around. So you've got a nice strong thorax. And essentially that's your fly done. But what I would do, I don't like it this, this dense. So I'm just gonna come with the scissors. As you can tell I've had a lot of whiskey over the Christmas break. My hands are shaking something rotten. And I'm just gonna pull out the areas where the fibres are quite dense. Just drag one up the head there. Not necessary, but you know, why not? Why not? And then from there, bit of varnish on the thread. Wipe off a bit of excess with the finger. Again, that's also not necessary really. Just a, couple, a good whip finish or, or two would, would suffice. But I find it just gives me that peace of mind. And there you have the finished fly. And as I said, it's by far my most productive nymph that I use. It's a great pattern when it's wet fibres just, just go back nicely and create a lovely translucent effect over that orange rib. Uh, it's really effective for both trout and grayling, so give it a try, go out there, give it a swim and see what you think. <laughs> <laughs>